I'm Pat Brissett, Clark University alum 68, former WAA president. I'm guest hosting for Ramona on Ramona Interviews. I would like to thank her for the opportunity to share with you a piece of women's sports history. The three women you are about to hear, Barbara Norris Anderson, Mary Giovellini Garetti, and Pat Hassett, all have personal connections to Clark University and the Sisterhood of Women's Sports. The fact is, there weren't any sports programs in 1942. There just weren't any. And there was very little chance of there being any sports programs because, number one, there were no available facilities or showers. Number two, there were no staff persons willing to accept such a responsibility with no facility. Right. And number three, the alumni gymnasium was legally not available to women's college at that time. But you know, <clears throat> there was a solution. And you know what it was. The old gym in the basement of Jonas G was a possibility. Now this room, <clears throat> with its pillars and sloping floor and empty lockers mm -hmm. and old pipes, became a reality. Right. Who minds a few pillars in the middle of a basketball court? And you know, we can always find a shower somewhere. But as for a coach, the women's varsity basketball team of 1942, a graduate student, a real honest-to-goodness coach, a wonderful woman named Miss Hazel Hughes took the position. And a team of 50 women had a sports program. So once more, we gathered together, and our team was on its way. The first women's varsity basketball team practiced amid those pillars and traveled to other colleges to meet new challenges. The first year team played gloriously, we really did, and on occasion we'd walk down Main Street to the YWCA and enjoy practicing and gaming in its facility. And they had showers and they had everything which they were very good to give us. And on rare occasions, <coughs> the ASTP, which is an army unit, which was stationed at Clark, and the men's college would allow us the use of the alumni gym. Occasionally, if we were having a game with Fitchburg or somebody else, they would let us do that. Right. But even then, we faced some new challenges. We finally got permission to use the alumni gym. We had to assure that the rules and regulation makers, to them, that we would be sure to wear coats and jackets and would cover our bare legs and bright red jumpers when we crossed the campus going back and forth. So they checked us going over and going back. And those uniforms we have samples of, which we all laugh at now, <laughs> but there right. was something else. <laughs> so in 1942, the first sports program for women became a reality. That first varsity basketball team <clears throat> won seven out of eight games, playing opposite YWCA Varsity, Worcester Girls Club, Worcester State Teachers Club, and the YWCA Industrials. My best game ever at Clark was, uh, I think it was when I was a junior, and uh, Hazel Hughes had made uh, me and Delina Streeter co-captains, two guards, which th th at that time the guards could not cross the center line, which right. was kind of boring in a way, but it wasn't in another way because you played your heart out on that other side to get the ball to the forwards who could score. So we went down to Radcliffe, which was part of Harvard, and the Cliff girls, as they were popularly known, had never been beaten that year, or I guess the year before also. So the poor little Clark girls came wandering in to play the mighty Radcliffe girls. And I remember distinctly one girl who was my target, I had to guard her. And she was all of six feet tall, and I'm, at that time, was all of five, four and a half, and the half stretched. <laughs> right. uh, <laughs> she was a good six feet tall with long arms, and I think I played my heart out because we beat them, and I had one advantage over her, she couldn't jump. So I intercepted quite a few balls, and Delina and I played our uh, best game, I think, that I could ever remember playing, and we beat them. And uh, 
About two days later when we were back on campus, somebody came in with a uh, newspaper from Radcliffe and it had on it, Cl uh, Cliff girls go down valiantly to defeat. So they were not used to that, but we became very used to it. And the last two years, uh, my junior year and senior year at Clark, we were undefeated. Well, as I can remember this, when I started working at Clark, it was a very hippie movement time also. And the students were very, very active in many aspects of throwing furniture downstairs and going out into the square and picketing the president's office. And through that, we, you know, we felt that we had issues at hand all over the country. But again, I was brought there by Dean Marsha Savage to put together a women's athletic program. Also voluntary phys ed and recreation. So with that, we, had, we learned that we had quite a nucleus of students at Clark who came from families that provided them with um, the skills of playing tennis, uh, aerobic dancing, and whatever. So I started probably the biggest um, student uh, work-study program on campus by hiring students with special skills to come into the gym and teach different areas of recreation to their fellow students. You did say that initially when you came in, you didn't have much, uh, you know, use of the gym. No, we, the, the, the women's gym as it was AKA was really, it was very old and it was obviously the main, the main support of the entire building because it had those poles. And I would go over to the alumni gym, AKA men's gym, and I would ask, you know, the women need more time. They need to have, to have equal time. And then and Title IX was coming of, of, of age now also. We need parity, and we don't have parity here. I said, I need to have the men's locker room separated from our two racquetball courts and the weight room. So present the wall. We built a wall and we put a door on it, but we still didn't have a locker room. So I said, I said to the deans, you're gonna be mad at me tomorrow because I'm gonna be doing something tonight that's not gonna please anybody on this campus. And I, she, they said, what is it? I says, tell you tomorrow. So I had campus police come over to the men's faculty locker room and clip all the locks on the lockers, put all their stuff in secure bags, and then I went outside with, with a scraper and I scraped men's faculty, men's faculty locker room off the door and I posted a sign that said women's locker room. You know, and this was the forceful intrusion that we had to endure to get it across to everybody else involved or concerned or not that we were there to stay and we wanted to do like everybody else did and we want to do it right and have equal access on all levels. I'm Pat Brissett, and I'm part of a committee that is working on documentation of women's athletic history at Clark University in the 40s and 50s and 60s. We recently have found that the only written documentation that we have basically fits in a shoebox. So we have gone back and have contacted women who played sports and were athletes at Clark to recapture this history with oral and uh, written stories and we're looking for memorabilia. So if you can help us out at all, uh, please contact the Clark Alumni Office and they can contact our committee. Uh, we are trying again to recapture history and put it in the archives so it isn't lost again.